Okay, time to get down to serious business. We're gonna actually do some digitizing this time. Um, we're gonna we're gonna do hand digitizing. Um, we're gonna turn a picture into an embroidery design. And it's gonna be a really basic picture, uh, but it's gonna be cool anyway. And uh, you can use the things that I show you on here to really create any embroidery design from any picture and we're not doing the auto digitizing this is like we're actually hand digitizing like true professionals here um, so what we're gonna do is work from what's called a backdrop and a backdrop is a like a JPEG image or a picture you download off the internet or scan off your scanner or whatever however you acquire the the, the artwork that we're gonna use to, to trace uh, and it's gonna come up as like a background that we can't interact with we can't click on it or anything it's just gonna be there as like a guideline for us um, so the way you access your backdrop tool is this button right up here backdrop tool and we're gonna hit the little little arrow behind it and hit load backdrop so we hit load backdrop left click um, now the f this is the default folder that uh, your program will look in if you've never used the backdrop tool uh, and the image that I'm going to use, which you're going to have too, because it comes with your program, is up one level. So you hit the little up one level button here, and then go into artwork, and it's a file called Cherries. So you left click on the Cherries here and hit open, um, and there is my picture that we're going to do. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on it, pan down. So this is I can't select it, I can't move it. It's not in the sequence view. It's there's nothing there. It's just a guideline for me. This is going to be the same as if I were taking a drawing and holding it up to a window to trace it onto another piece of paper, basically. It's the same kind of idea. Uh, and so we're going to be tracing in this stem and the cherries and the leaves and, and all of that stuff. Uh, we're going to trace that stuff in ourselves. So when we look at this drawing, the first thing we want to do is think about kind of the layers um, and, and the order that we want to draw these things in because the, the order that we draw them in is going to be the default order that they sew out in um, so it's easier if we draw them in the order that we want to sew them out in, so we don't have to go and change the sewing order um, you know when we're done drawing everything in so uh, I'm looking at this and I see that the stem is on top of the cherry so that's going to need to sew out after the cherry does so I'm going to go ahead and draw my cherries in first now I could go in and trace the outline here for the circle of the cherry, but I have an easier way to do that. I can use the, the automatic shapes that are built into this. I know there's a circle built into the program that I can use. So to get to it, I go up to my artwork. This is what we use to draw in lines. We hit that, and we choose ellipse, which is circle. So we left click on that. And now we want to draw the circle for this cherry. So I'm going to start by clicking somewhere up in this area, left click and hold, and bring it down so that it just about matches. Okay, and it's not perfect, it doesn't have to be, because look, once I've drawn that, I get these handles, these black handles, and I can click and change this shape just so that it is just perfect the way that I want it. All right. Good. Now at this point, I'm going to choose a color, and they're cherries, so they're going to be red. So I go up on my color wheel and click on red up here, and uh, now my line is red. And now I'm going to apply stitches to this. I want this to, to be a fill stitch, which is just going to be a flat, filled-in color. It's going to be red. So I go up to apply stitches which is my heart, which now is lit up here, which it wasn't before. If I don't have something that can be turned into stitches highlighted, this isn't going to be active, but it is now because I've got something highlighted. I click on it, I go to fill, and I'm going to do just a standard fill here. There's a bunch of different fills to choose from, but we're going to do just a standard fill for this. So I'm going to left click standard and boom, there I've got my stitches. If you're not seeing it in 3D on your computer, you can go up and click um, the draw 3D button, turns it on and off. I'm actually going to leave the Draw 3D off so that I can see through it. See how I can see the outline still through this? Now, I need this exact same thing over here. So I could go in and do this and get my circle and draw another circle in, but it's exactly the same circle as this one. So why would I bother to do that when I can just copy and paste it? So what I'm going to do is left click on my cherry, go up to my edit menu up here on my clipboard, hit copy, 
and paste. And if you look in your sequence view, you've got two circles now. And they're right on top of each other. But I need to move the one that I just made. So I'll left click and move it over. There we go. Now I've got another, another cherry. So I've got two cherries here. And the next thing is going to be these leaves. Now, I don't have an auto shape that's in the shape of a leaf. I know I don't. So I'm going to have to draw these myself. But it's not scary to do that. What we're going to do is just trace them. And the way we're going to trace them is just going to click and click and click and click. It's going to make a line if I go up to my artwork tool up here and choose the line tool. Now I've got all these other tools. We're going to work right now with the regular straight line tool. We'll get into the three click curve and one click curve and all that later. For now, we're just going to stick with the regular old straight line. So we click the line button. And I'm going to start with this leaf, although I could do either one. It, although actually, you know what? This one's on top of the stem. It doesn't matter. We're going to do this one first. So we're going to left click, left click, left click, left click, left click left click and so on. I'm, I'm going to do it quicker here and I'm not going to keep saying click. I'm going to go all the way around the design and it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to match up exactly at all. And so where you can't see the line you just kind of fudge it. And just like I did here. Going all the way around. So I've got this part and when I'm done I right click. And that generates my line. I'm going to make it green. I'm going to go up. Make it green. And go to apply stitches, standard fill, there we go. I've got my green filled in here. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with this other leaf, even though really it's technically on top of the stem. I don't care. I'm doing it anyway. I never said I was a good digitizer. I just, I know how to use the program. <laughs> Really, I'm, um, you know, it'll work. You'll see what I do at the end to get all the outlines or, uh, you know, all the overlap taken care of. Anyway, so I draw, again, same way. I left click all the way around. Um, it still remembers the same color that I wanted. Apply the stitches, make it a fill, standard fill. Very good. Okay, so we've got that part done. And now we're going to trace the stem. And I'm just going to go. Now, this is why I left it. 3D off because I can see my outlines through here. So I can just go in and click all the way through. Making my stem. And I'm not worried that I'm overlapping here. I'll show you why in a minute. Click in. By the way, if you make a mistake, look at that, uh, I just clicked way off. The backspace key on your keyboard goes back one. And you can do that all the way through the whole line that you've made. But here I'm still tracing the outline here. I'm almost to the end. And boom. All right, it's green. I don't want it to be green. I want it to be brown because it's a stem. So I choose a brown color. And again, I'm going to go to Apply Stitches, make it a fill stitch, and there we go. Now, this has some overlap that I didn't want it to have, that I don't really want it to have um, in the finished product here. Um, so the way you get rid of that is if I click on something that has an overlap, like this leaf is currently overlapping well it is being overlapped by the the stem so I actually I click on the stem and right click on the stem so I'm in the sequence view I've got my stem selected I right click on it and I hit remove overlap stitches and then here it's gonna keep some of the overlap so that there's no gap there a half a millimeter is usually good so we're gonna say okay and now look it's actually cut out 
where the overlap was automatically without me doing anything. I love that. It, when I found out that this program did that, that's when I was like, okay, Masterworks 3 is cool. Because <laughs> I used Masterworks 2 for like, you know, five or six years and I wasn't used to it. But as soon as I saw that you could do that, I was like, yeah, okay, you and me, Masterworks 3, we're cool. Because uh, that is awesome that it does that. So uh, here, I'll put it in 3D so we can see it. Look at that. Got all my shapes in there. Now all I need is my outlines. So how am I going to get my outlines in? Well, if you're working with an image that's really, really clean like this one, I could use what's called the magic wand and cheat and have it trace the whole thing. You're never going to have image uh, artwork like this, though, in, in real life. So the best way to do it is to just do your own line to be the outline. And I'm just going to click around the outside edge of this. I'm going to do it really fast here. If you're doing this for real, you want to do it and be a little more careful. But check this out. I can go up and go over myself to travel through the design. Look at this. I'm just clicking back over myself here. Totally fine to do that because it's just a running stitch. And I'm going fast. So my outline's not going to be, you know, professional quality. But really, I'm I'm a pretty lazy digitizer in general anyway. So we go up here and I'm just following the the outline that's provided to me. Oops, that's a little too far off from my taste, so I hit backspace. And I'm clicking around, up, over. Now, you don't want to click too close together. I'm actually being guilty of being a clicker. John Deere would yell at me for that. But you know what? I'm not a professional digitizer, like I said. I'm just, I'm just a guy, man. So I go up here, tracing around the edge. And at this point, I really need to go around my cherry. You kind of get a feel for what order your clicks need to be in. Luckily with a running stitch you can hide your movements just by going over yourself. And it'll just make your line look a little bit bolder. I mean, it's it's better if, if you have a path that you can find that doesn't go over yourself a million times. But when you're first getting started, anything that you produce is going to look cooler than you know, not doing anything at all. So don't be afraid to mess around and click all over the place. Who cares? So I'm clicking and clicking and clicking and clicking. Here, I'm doing it again. I'm clicking too close together. This is actually what that um, three-click curve thing is for, is it makes a curve for you without you clicking a million times. And I'm going to do a video explaining how that works. But here, we're just like, you know, this is the way I used to always do it before I had that option. So now my outline is complete. I right Oh wait, look, I just noticed a spot I'm missing right here. So what we're going to do is travel back up through this part of the stem. Hmm, how can I get there? Alright, so I need to go... You know what I'm going to do? Okay, here's, here's an example of how to fix when you screwed yourself up like this. Alright, so I've got this whole thing done. I don't have an easy path to click back to this part of it. Oh, yeah, I do. Here we go. I can go backwards down this way. Forgive me. Uh, I'm not on a script here. I'm just kind of doing this. So, all right, there we go. So what I did was I traveled back down this way and back up, and my movement will be hidden by my, my the fact that this is all just one continuous straight stitch. So anyway, I right-click to generate. I'll make my outline black and make it a Go to Apply Stitches and make it a running stitch. And now I draw the whole thing 3D. I've got some crudely drawn cherries. Now, you can't trust what it looks like when you when you actually when you digitize the design uh, on the computer. You have to go and sew it out to see what it's going to look like because the the computer is just incapable of representing exactly what thread's going to look like. So. You don't want to spend a million hours sitting there trying to make your outlines line up perfectly on the computer because it's it's not going to represent exactly what it's going to look like on the sewing machine. So go and sew it out, and then you can go back and see where you need to move lines, um, you know, change the, the outline slightly. But for the most part, this is how you digitize from a backdrop. Um, you just draw the shape, apply the stitch, put your outline in if you're using an outline, and that's it. File. Save as, put it as a BLF file, and then save it as a PES file too. Sew the thing out and see how it looks. So, all right. Um, 
that's the end for this video, and I will see you on the next video.